had a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the uh, devil glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that they found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. Talk rubbish. So, so they it's also, push it down. It's it's also measured pushed. against sea level. It's not measured about when you get, otherwise they'd just big a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the, the, the no, peak it, is at, measured at, at against the end of the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, <laughs> he's not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so it, don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock, and it went like, ding. I'm like, what's that? Went, ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. <laughs> Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, all <laughs> right. Up Everest. Okay. There's, the council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused, you've confused a few things there because I think the, the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there yeah. and everyone said, I don't understand, how's the piano doing up here? And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged, a, oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance, yeah. but thought, I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, bloody tipping or aliens or anything. My dad used to bury things in the garden because the council used to charge for like washing machines and and mangles and and cookers uh, and pets so i'm just thinking in millions of years when they dig that up they think that dogs used to cook and <laughs> yeah, like do yeah. washing up and things yeah i love the idea of burying utensils i think of the hole big enough to to bury a washing machine or a mangle so whoever kind of bought that house after your your yeah, dad they got a little treating store yeah lovely little um themed rockery <laughs> yeah the weather is weird this morning. One minute it's sunny, then it's thundering, then hailstones, then it's sunny again. People will be saying it's global warming. I don't really know what that means. Everything's changing all the time, innit? I wonder if years ago, when we first came out of the sea and we walked on land upright, did people blame the weather for that? Good point, isn't it? No, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. We didn't come out of the sea and instantly start walking around like humans and go, oh, can you believe it? We were swimming around, we were having a whale of a time. Do you know what? I blame the weather. No, but... Now they would, if that happened. It's the same way, say like, um, evolution, right? We talk about it a lot, mm. right? Now, years ago, I don't know how it happened, but some whale had legs, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is how it started. Before he was a whale, yeah. Whales started off with legs, they that's right. They were rolling right. about on, on the beach front, right? Anyway, it worked out that, you know, they didn't like it or whatever, get back in. Now, say, if that happened again now, Right. Say if someone's born, and they say they always say, don't they check for lumps and stuff? Right. Make sure you haven't got any lumps. Now say. Well, I, sorry. Sorry. Who says this? And what? what what's the what? Like magazines and doctors and that. What, always say, check when for when you were first born. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but Ar all, arbitrary all, decision. Yeah, that yeah, answer. Yeah. But <laughs> Go all, on. all I mean is now. Say if like our evolution thing is kind of like the next level is for us to have three legs because we're, we're that busy on the world now. But it doesn't work like asking. that. Why would it work like that? Because that's nature, isn't it? It deals with it. If people are getting stressed out and getting achy legs a lot because they're going, well, what you're doing there is you're using two legs like you've got three. You need another one. But the problem is, no. Say Let if finish. say if someone grew a leg now, because it's like, well, we need three legs. Yeah, but do let him finish. Okay. People would go, oh, I found a lump, right? And the doctor would go, oh, whip that out. Now that could be a third leg that's growing. But Carl, evolution doesn't work like that. 
It does Some, well, suddenly like something isn't born with a perfectly formed third leg that can be passed on. I know, it's a lump. It starts off like a lump, and, and if you left it alone, yeah. it would eventually, over a bit of time... Uh, no, over many, many millions of years. Yeah, but, but it grows as another leg, but we're not letting that happen anymore. It also wouldn't happen. It, 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 limbs don't work like that either. They do if you keep putting extra pressure on two legs. Carl, you're... you're honestly, what you imagine the process of evolution and natural selection to be is... Uh, I, it's beyond me. It's no, incredible. No, but it depends what surra whatever your surroundings are, that's what you change to, isn't it? Like the... Well, the you don't, you, well, you don't change to it. You're either selected or you're not. So... Uh, uh, what happens is there's a genetic throw-up. So something's born... Uh, you know, a llama's born with a slightly longer neck. And if that gets, you know, the leaves that are slightly higher up and it survives, it lives longer, it passes on its genetic material. Um, uh, soon, if that works, now over millions and millions of years, uh, that they're the dominant species, a new species uh, uh, um, is thrown up with a slightly longer neck, uh, uh, and so on and so on, and it's mm. gradual. It's just a slight no, advantage. No, sometimes it happens quicker than that. There's been animals that have had eyes and then they go, oh, they don't need them, they go in the space of a fortnight. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what no, what are you talking about? There's a lizard somewhere where it's roaming about in the dark and it used to have eyes and they used to be like, what, why have we got eyes and that? What's the point in having these? Because we're keeping them open. And they were getting more tired. <laughs> because at the end of the day, if your eyes are open, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Blind people can stay up longer than a someone with eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, I want to follow this through to its natural right, conclusion. Keep right. going, keep going. There is no, there is nothing to do. Right, uh, Right. the first signs of you getting tired, you go, oh, my eyes, I can hardly keep them open. Yeah. So a blind person doesn't get that, because they can roam about with them short like so that. So they never sleep, do they, so, blind people? Well, they sleep, but not, they don't need as much, because their eyes aren't stinging. All guessing, all guesswork, and all nonsense. I mean, all nonsense. Well, hang on, fair enough, okay, let's ex even if we accept that to be true of blind people, what, what was happening with the lizards? The lizards were going, I can't believe this is mad, we don't need our eyes, we're down underground, what's the point? Over. Jeff, Bill, let's just no longer use eyes. Well, they were just like, um, in a way, it's better if we keep our eyes shut to keep the soil out and stuff. Um, and then, over a time, they were like, oh, my eyes are stuck. Like the time <laughs> when, For uh, a fortnight, you said. No, 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 no. Well, it's over hundreds of millions of years. And the other thing is, it's not the case that there's no will to evolution, what happened was that they, a, a, a blind one had no disadvantage, so he was selected um, uh, uh, better than one with eyes that maybe would find it irritating or, or, or getting in the way. You know, just like um, a, a snake, it's not a disadvantage for a snake to lose its legs because it, it, it's selected and and then it's an advantage because they, they they can get into places that they you know where legs would get in the way. Like I've said before, right? You see, like a little fella, like a, a midget or a dwarf or something. Right. Who's to say that that isn't the way we should be? Do you mean how do we know that? Well, everybody looks at them and goes, "Oh, look, little fella," but really. It doesn't matter. If if we were all like that, the world would be a better place, because it's bigger, so there's more to see. Whereas for us, we're, we're getting bigger all, all the time. The world isn't growing, so there's less to see for us. So for a midget, the world is brilliant. So I'd say it'd be good if we do go backwards as opposed to forwards. Instead of us getting bigger all Steve, the time... Do you want a cup of tea? No. I'm not sure, mate. I'll leave you to um, it. Do you know what I mean, though? Have we, got, we haven't got any... I've only, we've only got instant coffee as well. No, yeah, I but, might pop out for something. But what I mean is, they always say oh, like I'll the, make it. the body's no, no, thanks, mate. But tell me when he's finished. I'm oh, just no, saying no, no. the body's getting bigger, and instead of going forward, no then, sugar for me, thanks. Uh, Do you want milk though? Yeah, yeah, milk. Forget it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it, and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And they'll be what? They'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they? You like, did, I'll tell you just, what though, right? No, I'm getting worried now because... The stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. 
Do you know what I mean, though? Like a proper paranoid sort of... It, one of those people that soon going to live in a loft covered in tinfoil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the... You know, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on uh, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, uh, think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week... Um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone, right? And they're saying how these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, is it Ted? He went, what? <gasps> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ. I came, it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Went to bed and chatted about food to Suzanne. I said it would be best if our bodies could be run on something like coal. That way you wouldn't get fat people because you wouldn't be eating for enjoyment. You'd just be eating to give you energy. Suzanne said, why do you always take the nice things out of life? Because sometimes to think about the future, you, you, it's not going to be all good, is it? Look at the way we have to do things now that we sort of go, oh, I'm sick of this. But they do it for your own good. But you try and no. change the laws of the universe. Based on arbitrary whims. No, but yeah. we're always eating stuff. That's one of the things we do now, isn't it? As soon as we find a new creature, like that frog, that's been hidden away for, like, millions of years, you get someone who go, I wonder if we can eat that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's it, everything that's walking on the world. They sort of see what powers it's got. Uh, what, what powers what, it's got? No, like, if it can jump far, um, you know, is it poisonous? Can you get anything out of it to save people? And yeah. then, can we eat it? They're the three things that they do with a new frog. <laughs> Any creature. So what are they? Can it jump fast? Yeah. Has it Is got it any poisonous? Poison in it that Is... you can use to get rid of illnesses. Yeah. Can you eat it? Because That's the more, first more... three questions anyone asks. Do it they? It seems to be the way because you look at menus and that how they're getting bigger and bigger now, and that's only because we're finding more and more species of stuff. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at some stuff on a menu, that that octopus you eat. At some point, that would have gone through the list of, right, what does it do? What's it got in it? What does that ink do? What's it taste like? Can it jump? Can it, whatever, it, well, they've done tests on it, haven't they, when we said about it being in a, getting in a jam jar or something. Yeah. So it's all part of it. Everything's been tested. Everything. But I think, what the thrill is that the first you hear of a new fangled food, do you think that uh, in ancient civilization they didn't, they didn't do this. They didn't try an oyster or, or spear a fish or Yeah, because they, eat there a wasn't maggot. that much other stuff knocking about at that time. Right. We've got loads of stuff, so why are we messing about with some new frog? It's all like people just like showing off, don't they? Leave the frogs, let them get busy and have loads of them, eat the chickens, when we run out of them, move on to the frog or whatever. But why why have all this on the go? Do you know what I mean? It just makes it... I, I, I hate going out for a meal now, because it's like, what, what are you having? Oh, I'm sick of it. Look at it all. <laughs> and then you're forced into people going, oh, have you had the new frog? <laughs> no, I don't want it. I was happy with chicken. That's what I mean. I... Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you ever been out, Rick, and someone's been trying to force frog on you? Never. I've never been forced frog in my life. Although I did go for a meal once with Carl. We went there, and uh, he had the Oriental hors d'oeuvres, uh, I recommended, right? Um... And uh, he was trying to get this little oyster, right, off the shell, right, and he was going to get stuck to its house, right, and uh, I looked round, and his eyes were watering, and he was choking, and he was drinking water, I said, what, and he said, I ate that, and it was a big blob of wasabi, Oof. right, and I said, why did you put it all in one to end, he said, I thought it was a mushy pea, <laughs> why would they put one mushy pea? Was it hardcore, the wasabi? It felt like my head was caving in. <laughs> <laughs> That was just Ricky squeezing it, wasn't it? Between courses. <laughs> Trouble with that, though, is, uh, you know hot food, yeah. why you get addicted to really hot food, is the pain is actually your, it's killing taste buds. And then endorphins are released in the brain, like, you know, a morphine derivative to, to uh, 
sort of go, it's all right, oh, calm the pain. So you actually get ad addicted to that sort of, you know, what but happens. But why, why would you want to kill your taste buds? But new ones come back. Well, yeah, I think they, you, you know, I think you... Straight away? Well, I don't, I don't know how long it takes. I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure. No, it's just, is that the chef sort of going, oh, I'm serving some right rubbish tonight. Give him some of that kusabi. Kusabi! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, and Tonto! <laughs> oh, God. Back to the diary. At lunchtime, I went to a local cafe and had an omelette. An old woman, who was about 70-ish, was in there eating pizza. It didn't look right. No. I know what you mean there, actually. Old people eating pizza seems a bit weird. What about an old Italian lady eating pizza? Would that be right? Uh, no, I'd expect her to have lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried it could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. I, there's so many elements in this. There's a, there's a woman who can read... She used to read that mind. again. Read that again. Okay, we're gonna have an instant I'll, replay no, now. Any what, psychologist listening, or psychiatrist, or just well, anyone, listen to this. What Carl's put in his diary. Okay, Steve, away you go. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago, when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them... Um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff, so right. you get a, a recording, a recording of, the, of it. Uh, yep. And she was just there, and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was it looking what worried? What do you mean, pick up vibes? Depends what you mean by pick up vibes. Do dogs pick up loads of vibes and stuff. I read the other day how they can tell if someone's got cancer and Well, that. they can, they, well, yeah, that, so that, that's, it's, it's one there's a voice. science behind that. They, they can smell the different... Uh, yeah. at a cellular level yeah, you know, so it's, the same sort it's of like thing. 70 times dry. but no no they can't go the, the dog wouldn't even know you're an idiot the dog uh, the even dog was sort of looking weird and stuff it and then knew she, she it was, knew she but, was looking at me but were they looking I'm not being funny were they looking at the roundness of your head do you no, think they were just, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind Thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on a beach. <laughs> he remembers what he was uh, thinking. No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh no, I'm, going, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. <laughs> But why were you worried that she was reading your mind? Because you weren't thinking of anything, un, you know, no, unsafe. Oh, no, don't, don't, oh, please. No, 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 I'm just trying to get in his it, mind. It his doesn't rationale. work, Carl. No, 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 no one his, can read your mind. No, but wait, wait, what I mean is, even if, you know, let's assume that you thought she could read your mind, why did you think that there was anything wrong with finding out what you were thinking? Because she knew, she'd have known that you knew that she could read minds. So she, if she read your mind and all you were thinking was she can read my mind, she'd think what? Of he course, knows that I can if read she my mind. really could read your mind, she's yeah, going. But... There's Carl there trying to make me uh, think that it's the dog. I know he's thinking of the dog. No, but when you sort of uh, try and think of normal things, you think of mental things, don't you? So I was like, Whoa, hold well on, this let that go. On, go, go on. on. No, I just mean like you're going. Oh God, I best not watch what I'm thinking. Then what were you thinking? Tell, what tell were you me thinking? some of the mental no, things. No, there was loads of think. things that was in there. Like, there was an old woman who used to annoy me in there. Who used to give me socks all the time. <laughs> and socks, socks. She used oh, to always socks. make loads of socks, and she'd be bringing them in. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I sort of said, "Look, I'm sick of your socks," she kept bringing them in all the time. And they had like pictures on, and that. I didn't want socks with pictures on. So. um so I used to, I might have been s sort of stood there going, oh, there she is with the socks, I'm sick of her. Now, if she can sense that, she'll go over to her and go, watch him, 
Stop bringing like him socks, socks yeah. or whatever. No one can read minds. No one can contact the dead. Say like me, right? If I sometimes come in the in the room and that, and I'm fed up, you go, "Oh, Carl's fed up." I haven't even said anything. So it's because, just that. That's because you look like a miserable bastard. Yeah, yeah and we can we know what that means. We're we're, we're human, and we understand right. facial so movements. It's a bit and like moves. that. It's a bit like that. It's a level down from no, that. No, 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 no. She should be able to read your mind if you're locked in a safe. And she doesn't know who you are, and she doesn't know whether there's someone in there. No, that's that, what the double that, blind test that is. That would never work, would it? Because that means she'd never get a rest. That's like so you're making up the rules. You're making up the rules. Oh no, the thing is, that's what these people do. Go, oh no, I have to hold your hand. Oh, I have to. You have to write it down. Well, why? Why do you? It's the same as these mediums that contact the dead. They go, oh, I'm getting someone. Just ask him who he is. Just give us his full name and address. It's ridiculous. I know the fact that these these dead people give him cryptic clues. Ask him about the uh, toaster. What's your name? What's your name? Can't say my name. Might be an uncle. Just give me your fucking name. Back to Carl's diary. Friday the thirty first. I read that some fella had been having an affair. His wife found out, so when he was asleep, she super glued his knob to his stomach, one of his bollocks to his leg, and glued his arse cheeks together. Then chucked him out. If Suzanne did that, I would definitely not get back with her. Saying that, I would have woke up if someone was putting super glue on me arse. I'm quite a light sleeper. Is that what she did? Is it? Yeah, that's why I'm a bit cautious about wearing earbuds every night. The uh, plunge things. <laughs> Earbuds, earbuds. Right. So that's a, no, so that's not a called right. Plunge things. He's like he makes up words. They taught a chimp to talk, and the chimp had a better grasp of language after about a few years than Carl. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I won't wear buds and plunge things. <laughs> I phoned him up the other day. Uh, uh, he went. He went. Oh, just tried out those new earplugs that mould to your ear. You can't hear a thing except your own voice. And I went. Oh, right, they're good, aren't they? He went. Yeah. He said it's weird hearing your own voice. And it because you're hearing it as other people hear it. I went, no, you're not. He went, you are. He said, you don't usually hear your own voice because usually when you talk, you're talking over it. <laughs> woke up at nine fifty-five a.m. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, "Did I tell you about?" <laughs> <laughs> I just think of him opening his eyes and looking. At him. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so he's he's he he opens his eyes. He looks at Suzanne. She looks at him. What question, Rick? Do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on. What question do you well, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up. I said to my girlfriend, "Did I tell you about?" <laughs> I woke up. I looked at Suzanne. She looked at me. I said, "Did I tell you about the immune system?" <laughs> tell you about the immune system. <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God. I was thinking that. Springing into action. He zips up. His eyes are like... <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up. Carl. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. I was talking to Suzanne about how it's odd that Sundays are meant to be the day of rest. I thought God was meant to be born on a Sunday. Or was it the seventh day that he finished making the world? <sighs> Imagine how good the world could have been if he'd given it an extra day. Sometimes <laughs> it's best to give yourself a deadline, though, so you don't faff about. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Suzanne. She was leaning back on the bench with her eyes shut with the sun on her face. I never got an answer to my question. Pretending to be, to be asleep. asleep. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> No! What do you mean? Well, ah! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now what? then, would you walk, w how would you walk, would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I or, reckon I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! He solved it again! <laughs> He's thought it through! <laughs> oh. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that, that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. The story used the description to describe it. There was a picture. I think it was a fairly decent description. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. 
The world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, Cockroach I mean, men, spider men, what are you talking about? I haven't Don't had you... a normal conversation with you for a year. No. <laughs> It's getting worse, I think. I think I think it's because you've left and you've got too much time on your hands and you live in your head for sort of like maybe eight hours a day and then you offload when someone calls you or when you call me or, or Suzanne gets the, the brunt of it. But, I mean, I, I, I mean, I I don't know. I really would like to... And the nicest... I just still think he's brilliant, right? But I would like to get a little psychiatrist in just mm. to... Would you mind seeing no, a psychiatrist? No, it's just... There's nothing wrong... These are all ideas, aren't they? You look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery. Yet they're getting by, aren't they? They 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 have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff powers g going about? So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or, or whatever that no, you mean. said if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could use the, where's them. The, you've left a big bit out, but when that one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Cockroaches can live without a head. For... Could they still sort out the rubbish if they've got no heads? They could, couldn't they? Uh, Except they, if they were, because you know you want to use them as builders and dustmen, they couldn't whistle it pretty girls, could no, they? No, but they wouldn't be doing that job, they're just doing the bins. Okay. It's ants that are doing the building. Okay, I'm sorry. And are they getting up early? Are they disturbing you? They don't you? sleep, do they? But then they get you up even earlier. You ain't when the builders get you up at seven, then go to breakfast. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on as long, would it? Because the ants would be working hard. So it'd probably be one day of madness, but then it'd be finished. As opposed to builders just stood about whistling, doing nothing, going on for months. And is this ant six foot? Uh, no. No. About three. Three foot. So how many of them are there? About, uh, about 30 of them. And what do they look like? Are they just a giant ant with um, a- Ant, on. Um, just get on with it. I mean, it'd be weird for a bit, but with anything you get- you get used to seeing but things, Carl, don't you? again, this isn't an idea, it isn't a theory, you can't- you can't put this into practice because it doesn't exist. I it's, know, I'm just saying It's like- it's... Why, well, I mean, you wishing for- Ant builders is the same as you wishing that you didn't have to do any building and your house was just perfect, or you could just wish for it. What's the difference? Why go through this elaborate? <coughs> but th th what I'm saying weird, is that it? your wish is it, 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 you're taking you're not taking shortcuts. You see, it's the same people who goes, oh, I wish I could go back in time and put a thousand pounds on the Grand National. What you mean is you wish you had a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the time travel bit and put in a. Do you wish you were rich? Yeah. It's like so you wish you didn't have to have builders round. That's what you're wishing for. So this elaborate thing of getting a three-foot ant with a hard hat. Today I got an innovations catalogue. I thought I'd keep it because I like the stuff they sell in it. Brackets, one big slipper. What's that, one big slipper? It's just if you don't go out much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't like slippers. No, I know, but th th I think they're a good, good idea because they're just there to keep your feet warm. But why one big? Why not two sim smaller ones? So you can walk around? Yeah, one big slipper's just making it painful It's more awkward. sort of roomy, isn't it? Why it's do you think that's a good invention? One big slipper. How is that better Just than two smaller slippers? Because the problem is with slippers, right? You're, you've already said how you nip across the road in them, right? So you muck them up and you have to buy some more. There's no way you'll be nipping to the shops in that one big one. That will always stay where it should be, by the sofa next to the telly. And you go, right, I'm in for the night now, where's my slipper? <laughs> But couldn't I just put my feet inside a, a cushion cover or something? What? If you want. But it's, it's only cheap, why not get one? <laughs> You're right. They're, they're only cheap, why not get one? But then, Carl, why not get one big glove? If you're not going out, right, just get one big glove. You don't have to do anything, just one big glove. Pop your hands in one big glove. I'm not going out with gloves, you have to go out and touch stuff. Just one big glove. Why, 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 why yeah. Well, yeah, why bother putting trousers on? You've got to put uh, legs in both. Why not just wear a skirt? Yeah, well, well, put, pop a skirt on, yeah. Just put on a lady's skirt or a lady's dress. It's one piece, isn't it, then? Yeah. Just pop around in there. One big monocle, things. don't wear glasses, wear one big monocle. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid having two gloves, two gloves, two slippers, is mental. Anyway, um, I had a good sleep last night, so much so that I woke up before my legs did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means! This has happened before when I was younger. We used to have a phone in the bathroom so that if anyone called and we were on the toilet, you'd still be able to be available. 
My bedroom was next to the bathroom and the phone rang one morning. My mum and dad were at work and my brother and sister were out somewhere and the phone woke me up. So I jumped out of bed to answer it but the bottom half of my body was still asleep and I fell to the floor. <laughs> it's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? I, well, hang on. I yeah. had to crawl for a bit and reached for the phone. It was a fella selling some bread to my dad for the shop. By the end of the call, my legs were working again. <laughs> but it's a weird sensation. What shop? My mum and dad used to have a butty shop. So Did they? But the thing is, uh, just on the floor, top half, I had to sort of crawl, carrying my weight, and my legs were just like they weren't there. It's really, really weird. You mean you woke up with two dead legs, two pins and needles, mm. knee legs? Couldn't Are you sure you, were, you weren't wearing just one big slipper? <laughs> <laughs> You've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now I've done now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps. Well, is I'm what just, you're thinking? Well, isn't I'm it? not going to say that until I know. But what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary, which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? What did he say in it? Well, it's again more because it's both it's well written and it's also an amazing insight a into a document a social as well. Document, yeah, yeah. It's a social document. I of mean, that yours period. is a social document, but it it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cafe and seeing a ladybird, which you know. But that's that's today's living. That's well, his just, yes, but his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most. Yeah, it's but best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. The ladybird <laughs> happened, right? I wrote it down. He he was just lucky.